Hello friends, welcome to the epoxies, phenoxies and silicons under the edges of uh, polymer process engineering. Now before we go into the detail, let us have a look at what we discussed in the previous uh, segment. Uh, previous segment was uh, devoted towards the epoxies where we discussed uh, the introductory part of epoxies they are used in the polymeric system. Then uh, we discussed the classification scheme of epoxies and then how we can synthesize the epoxies. In this particular uh, segment, we are going to discuss the chemistry aspect of epoxies like ring opening mechanism. Then we will discuss about uh, the properties of epoxies then phenoxies will be discussed and silicons. All these things are very important especially when we deal um, the polymers in the electronics application. So let us discuss about the chemistry of epoxies. The chemistry of epoxies is based uh, primarily on the high reactivity of the strained three membered epoxy and they are called the auxiliary rings. Now with the acidic or alkaline compounds or compounds containing active hydrogen atom, the epoxy ring opens up and polymerization reaction takes place. This results in the useful epoxy coating, adhesives, encapsulants and laminates. Besides the epoxy group, the pendant hydroxyl group of an epoxy resin, they are also reactive and further cross-linking or the length in the polymer chain, this can occur through these groups. So if you need to widen the chain length or make more and more lengthening, then this kind of uh, protocol can be used. Let us talk about the ring opening of uh, epoxides with a strong nucleophile. The epoxide, they undergo the ring opening reaction uh, through a concerted uh, mechanism in which the oxygen atom of the epoxide serve as a leaving group and the resulting product contains the alkoxy group. This requires an aqueous or mild acidic workup to obtain a neutral species. So the concerted mechanism, the nucleophilic attack and the departure of the leaving group occur simultaneously. Here you see that this is oxygen and if we go for this base under the basic condition, the ring opening takes place. Now various nucleophiles, they can react with the epoxides following the mechanism and several common example of nucleophiles that react with the epoxides in this manner. This includes the hydroxides, the hydroxide ion OH minus, this can undergo the nucleophilic attack on the epoxide ring and resulting in the substitution of oxygen atom with hydroxyl group. And thiols, sometimes referred as RSH, they can serve as a nucleophiles to open the epoxide ring leading to the formation of a thioether group. Then cyanides, cyanide ions referred as Cn minus, this can act as a nucleophile and react with epoxides leading to the formation of cyanohydrin product. Grignard reasons, the Grignard reasons such as alkyl or aryl magnesium halides and referred as RMGX, this can undergo the nucleophilic addition to epoxide resulting the formation of alcohols. Then lithium aluminum hydroxide referred as LIALH4, this is a powerful reducing agent and that can react with epoxides leading to the formation of alcohols by reduction of uh, uh, oxygen atom. Now let us talk uh, the ring opening uh, of epoxide with weak nucleophile. When a weak nucleophile is used in acidic condition, the nucleophilic attack occurs at more substituted carbon which is uh, consistent with the stepwise mechanism. In stepwise mechanism, the nucleophilic attack happens only after the loss of leaving group. Now here you see that we have maintained the acidic condition. H plus I am, this is removing and then this form of this radical, I had got this one. Now these are mainly of HX type of acid, which first protonate the epoxide, thus making it more reactive since the oxygen is now better leaving group. After protonation, the halide attack 
and opens the epoxide ring forming an alcohol with an adjacent halide. Here you can see this particular thing. Now here we have enlisted certain uh, strong nucleophiles uh, files and weak nucleophiles like uh, NaCnH2 reacts with this one. So these are the some of the strong nucleophiles and here the weak nucleophiles. Now this is uh, the best example of ring opening copolymerization and the cross linking of uh, epoxide with the different functional groups like anhydride, we have used thiols, we have used amines, we have used alcohols with the help of catalyst and acids. So you can have a broad spectrum over here. Now sometimes uh, we are using the enzymes for the ring opening of uh, epoxide. The ring opening of epoxide can be catalyzed by various enzymes including epoxide hydrolase like EHS and lipases. Now epoxide hydrolases, they are enzymes that specifically target the and hydrolyze the epoxide bonds and they promote the addition of water molecule across the epoxy group and resulting the formation of diols or vicinal hydroxyl groups. Here you can see this is gyrometic uh, 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 epoxide ring opening by epoxide hydrolysis or uh, oxido reducers. then you can see over here. Now the enzymatic ring opening of epoxide, they offer several advantages compared to the traditional chemical method. Now this includes the mild reaction conditions uh, typically at ambient uh, temperature and a neutral pH. They offers the high selectivity towards the specific epoxide substrates and avoidance of harsh chemical or hazardous reagents. The enzymatic ring opening reactions, they can be used for the synthesis of various valuable compounds. For example, it is implied that uh, in the production of uh, chiral building blocks, uh, uh, pharmaceutical intermediates and the functionalized polymers. The use of enzyme allows the production of uh, in that geometrically pure products due to the inherent stereoselectivity of enzymatic reactions. Let us talk about the properties of epoxies. Now epoxies possesses a better combination of properties than other coating types which often renders them uh, the sole candidates for electrical application. And epoxies are super also superior to alkydes and silicons in the solvent and the chemical resistant. The electrical properties are good and remain fairly constant under 95 to 100 percent relative humidity and temperature up to say 150 degrees Celsius. Therefore, three properties which single out epoxies from other coating types like one excellent addition to the wide variety of substrate under many environmental conditions. Then excellent resistance to moisture, salt spray, organic solvent and chemicals and good electrical characteristics and stability of these parameters under various environmental conditions, notably moisture and temperature. Some of the key properties of epoxy includes also includes the high strength and epoxies are known for their exceptional mechanical properties including high strength, stiffness and toughness and they can withstand high stresses and strains without breaking or deforming. Then the chemical resistance, epoxies are highly resistant with, to a wide range of chemicals including acids, bases, solvent and fuels. Now this makes them ideal for use in harsh environments where exposure to chemical is in question. Now there are uh, several examples uh, this related to the chemical resistance. So in this particular table, uh, we can see the effect of changing the immersion solution over the change in the flexural strength of epoxy resin based concrete materials like uh, we have prepared the stress solution of distilled water or H2SO4 solution or NaCl solution and uh, with the varying immersion time with the initial mass which is enlisted and final mass and you can see the change in the flexural strength with respect to the uh, percentage. Now if we compare the flexural strength um, of the concrete material for say 84 days uh, and some of the scientists they have carried out this uh, experiment, 
and uh, this 84 days of immersion in different testing solution, it can be observed that the water and acid decreases the strength to 1.46 to say 8.63 percent respectively, while salt immersion leads to improving the strength of the material. Now, addition, addition, the epoxies they have uh, the excellent addition to a wide range of substrate including metals, plastics and components and this make them useful for bonding and joining application. Low shrinkages, the epoxies exhibit low shrinkage upon curing which helps to minimize stress and distortion in the final product. Thermal stability, epoxies they have the good thermal stability and can withstand at high temperatures without degrading or melting. Now, sometimes we talk about the properties of 100 percent solid coating, the chemical resistance, 100 percent solid coating, they are highly resistant to chemicals, this including acid, bases, solvent and fuels and this makes them suitable for the use in harsh chemical environment like chemical processing plants or oil refineries. Then abrasion resistance, abrasion is very good uh, properties to be looked into. So abrasion resistance, 100 percent solid coating, they have excellent abrasion resistance which makes them suitable for use in high traffic areas such as in parking, garage, uh, industrial floors, manufacturing facilities, digging operations, all these things. The impact resistance, the 100 percent solid coating, they are widely impact resistant which makes them suitable for use in area where heavy equipment or machinery is used. The UV resistance, 100 percent solid coating have the good UV resistance which makes them suitable for the use in outdoor application like as on bridges, pipelines and other type of infrastructural projects. Then waterproofing. 100 percent solid coating provides the excellent waterproofing which makes them suitable for use in areas that are exposed to moisture like in swimming pools, tanks and other water storage facilities. Fast curing, 100 percent solid coating cure quickly with which allows uh, for faster application and reduced downtime. Low VOCs, volatile organic contents, the 100 percent solid coating do not contain any VOCs which makes them environmentally friendly because VOCs creates a lot of environmental problem especially uh, when any human being inhales then it creates a lot of problem. So they do not contain any VOCs that is why they are safe for the use in area uh, where uh, the air quality is in question or concern. Phenoxys. The phenoxies they are also known as phenyl ether resins and they are the type of the thermosetting resins which are similar in structure to epoxies. They are prepared from dihydric phenols and epichlorohydrin in presence of caustic. Now the commercially available uh, coating utilize bisphenol A as the dihydric phenol and their structure may be represented like this. Now you see this is the typical phenoxy resin structure. Now resins for the coating they have the linear thermoplastic polymers with a molecular weight of 80,000 to 2 lakhs. The coatings are applied from the solution forming film 0.4 to over 2 mils um, thick, thick uh, upon the solvent evaporation and different formulations are available with varying drying times depending on the organic solvents which are being used. Coatings with methylethyl ketone solvent dry very fast because of low boiling point of methylethyl ketone solvent. Now while those these cellulose acetate they are slower and intermediate drying times can be achieved by using blends of these two solvents. Phenoxy coatings they have the limited uses in electrical or electronic application and they are commonly used as coating for can lining and as a primer for epoxy, vinyl or acrylic top coats. The electrical and the physical properties of phenoxy coatings are favorable under ambient conditions. Now these properties deteriorate rapidly when exposed to the temperature above 80 degrees Celsius. So 80 degrees Celsius temperature is the limiting temperature sometimes. Now phenoxy coating face uh, challenges uh, related to the complete solvent release 
leading to the quick formation of a surface film and entrapment of uh, solvent within the coating. Let us talk about the silicons. Silicons they are also known as polysiloxanes and they are the family of synthetic polymers made up of uh, repeating units of uh, siloxane, SiO backbone like this SiO, SiO and they are derived from silicon, oxygen, carbon and other organic or inorganic group attached to the silicon atom. And the silicons are known for their unique combination of organic and inorganic properties making them versatile material with a wide range of applications. The structure which we mentioned this allows for the presence of two different groups represented by R. Now, this R can be represented um, various organic group including methyl, phenyl, C2H6, allyl, C2H, C2, CH2, CH2, double bond CH2, adovinyl, CH, double bond CH2 and resins that uh, cure through condensation typically have the hydroxyl group at uh, the end of the polymer chain. Now, let us talk about the various properties uh, attached to the silicons. One important property is the thermal stability. Now, the silicon exhibits excellent heat resistance and uh, can withstand with the high temperature without significant degradation. Another property in question is the flexibility and elasticity. The silicons are highly flexible and elastic in nature and that allows them to make maintain their properties over a wide temperature range. Then the chemical resistance. The silicons have a good resistance to various chemicals, this including acid, bases, solvent, oils. So they create a barrier in such a way. Then electrical insulation. Silicon, they possesses a high electrical insulation properties, making them suitable for application where electrical insulation is required. Then water repellency. The silicons, they are hydrophobic in nature and repel water. This provides the good water resistance and weatherability. So, the shelf life can be enhanced. Then lower surface energy. Silicon have a low surface energy resulting in excellent release property and reduced surface adhesion. Biocompatibility. The certain type of silicons, they are biocompatible in nature and making them suitable for the medical and healthcare application. The transparency, some silicon exhibits high transparency allowing them to use in the optical application. So, you see that a wide spectrum of uses are there. Then let us talk about the use of silicons in the electronics, the encapsulation and potting. The silicons are widely used in encapsulating electronic components and potting applications to provide the electrical insulation, protection against the moisture and mechanical stability. The adhesive and sealant, the silicons are used as adhesive and sealant in electronic assemblies to bond components, provide vibration resistance and create hermetic seals. Thermal in interface materials, TIMs, the silicon in the form of thermal interface material are used to improve the heat dissipation and thermal management in electronic devices. Gaskets and O-rings, silicons are utilized as a gasket and o-rings to provide the effective sealing and protection against environment factors in electronic system. Conformal coating, the silicon based conformal coatings are applied in the printed circuit board to protect against moisture, dust and chemicals while maintaining the electrical insulation properties. Then membrane and diaphragm, the silicon they find the application in the membrane and diaphragm for sensors, switches and actuators due to their flexibility, durability and compatibility with various fluids. Some typical applications they are including the insulation for heating cables, insulation for wire, hookup, aircraft, ignition, then circuit board coating, then welded module conformal coatings they also referred to as a dip or freeze coating, then semiconductor junction coating, then electronic component protective coating water repellency, then impregnation uh, varnishes for coil, stators, rotors, generators, transformers, varnishes for flexible mica sheets, mica tape, glass cloths, leavings, then the clear or pigmented corrosion protective coatings, ablative coatings, insulating coating uh, for power supplies, connectors, relays, 
magnetic amplifiers, gel coating for integrated circuits. Now, the unique property of silicons, this make them more valuable material in the electronic industries, enabling to protection, um, insulation, reliable functioning of electronic components and devices. Now, when the silicons, they are widely used, then it is a prime responsibility to get it classified. So, there are various classification scheme of silicons and these can be classified based on the synthesis approach used to produce them like condensation cure silicons. These silicons are synthesized through a condensation reaction between the cinelol terminated polydimethylsiloxane PDMS and cross-linking agent usually a silane containing hydroxyl group. Now, this reaction generates byproducts such as water or alcohol and condensation cure silicon require the moisture to initiate the curing process and are commonly used in the applications such as mold making, potting uh, compounds and sealants. Then addition cure sil uh, silicons that is uh, sometimes referred as a platinum cure silicon. These silicons are synthesized using platinum catalyst to promote the addition reaction between the vinyl functionalized PDMS and hydrosilane crosslinker. The platinum catalyzed initiates the cross-linking reaction without producing byproduct and addition cure silicon offer excellent curing control, high purity and superior physical properties and they are widely used in medical, electronics and specialized industrial application. Another class is the peroxide cure silicons. Now, these silicons are synthesized by incorporating a peroxide based cross-linking agent into the silicon polymer. So, upon heating, the peroxide initiator a free radical reaction this leading to the cross linking and peroxide cure silicons are suitable for high temperature application as they offer good thermal stability and mechanical properties and they find use in automotive aerospace and electrical insulation applications another class is the emulsion polymerization in this the synthesis approach is adopted and silicon monomer or per pre polymer they are dispersed in water and emulsifier or surfactant are used to stabilize their dispersion and polymerization is initiated through the addition of initiator or heat and emulsion polymerized silicons are commonly used in coating, textile and personal care products. Another type of classification is based on sol gel synthesis. The sol gel synthesis involves the hydrolysis and condensation of silicon al alkoxide such as tetraethyl orthosilicate or methyl triethoxysilane uh, in the presence of catalyst and solvent. The synthesis method allows the formation of inorganic organic hybrid materials with a range of properties including high transparency, thermal stability and chemical resistance. Now, the sol gel silicons find application in optical coating, protective film and sensor technologies. It is important to note that these classification represents different approaches to silicon synthesis and each category may have variation and specific formulation depending on the desired properties and application. Now, let us talk about the different types of silicon resin. One is the silicon alkydes. Silicon alkyde resins, they are the class of hybrid polymers that combine the characteristics of alkyd resin and silicon, the silicon resin and they are created by modifying alkyd resin with the silicon functionalities resulting in unique properties and enhanced performance. They combine the benefits of uh, alkyd resin such as uh, good adhesion, durability and ease of application with the advantageous properties of silicon resin this including the high temperature resistance, weatherability, hydrophobicity. Now, they are usually prepared by reacting glycerol with the silicon ester or silanol instead of the fatty acid normally used in preparing alkydes. Now, other silicon diesters and hydroxyl terminated silicons, this may be used to give the structure like this. Now, thallic anhydride is then condensed with the uh, with this product and yield a high molecular weight, high cross-linked silicon alkyd of which uh, a typical structure can be represented like this. Now, they offer improved thermal stability, UV resistance, 
chemical resistance, weather resistance compared to the conventional alkyd resin. Now, the specific properties of silicon alkyd resin can be tailored by adjusting the type and amount of silicon modification in the alkyd backbone. Let us talk about the structure. Now, silicon alkyd resins, they have the complex structure consisting of alkyd resin backbone with incorporated silicon functionalities. The alkyd proportion, typically this includes the long chain fatty acids, polyols and an acid catalyst which undergo the esterification reaction to form uh, the alkyd resin. Now, silicon functionalities such as silane or cy uh, siloxane groups, they, they are introduced into the alkyd structure through the modification process. Let us talk about the uses. Now, silicon alkyd resin find application in various industries including coating, adhesive, sealant, protective finishes. They are particularly suitable for demanding environment where high temperature resistance, weather resistance, chemical resistance and durability are required. Common application this include the coating, industrial coating, marine coating, high temperature coating and architectural finishing. Now, let us talk about the chemistry. The chemistry of the silicon alkyd resin involves the modification of alkyd resin through the incorporation of uh, silicon functionalities. This can be achieved through various methods like reaction of alkyd resin with silanes or addition of sil uh, siloxane compound during the resin synthesis and this functionality introduced uh, silicon oxygen bond into the resin structure which uh, contribute to the enhanced properties of the uh, final material. Uh, it is apparent uh, that numerous modification of this basic chemistry they are possible giving rise to a multitude uh, proprietary silicon alkyd coating and silicon alkyd provides coating with greater flexibility, hardness and thermal stability than alkyd. But naturally, uh, then would they, they would not possess uh, the high thermal and oxidative resistance uh, of the unmodified silicons and must therefore be considered intermediate in nature. Nevertheless, these intermediate properties are considered very important in achieving a, a compromise between the thermal stability and ease of handling of uh, for many applications. And silicon alkyd coating are widely employed as a moisture barrier and corrosion protective coating for electronic component like resistors, transistors and integrated circuits. Let us talk about the halogenated silicons. Now, as in the case um, of epoxies, the chlorinated or brominated silicons may be prepared and the presence of such halogen group renders these resins non-flammable or less flammable than their non-halogenated counterparts like chlorinated diphenyl silicon, methyl uh, chlorophenyl silicon and many others have been prepared and characterized. Uh, the silicon formulation under the edges of uh, silicon properties, they are available as a solvent solutions, room temperature, vulcanizing, RTV rubbers and solvent, solventless resins and they have numerous and wide application in electrical and electronics industries and by far the most important use is an insulation in the form of extrusion or resin coating for high temperature, high voltage operating parts. So, dear friends, in this particular segment, we discussed the various application of epoxies. We discussed about the silicons, how they are synthesized, what are the different uh, classification schemes, uh, which is important, what are the different uses, how the industrial uh, applications can be incorporated three, uh, with the help of these silicons. And for your convenience, we have uh, enlisted uh, various references which you can utilize for further studies. Thank you very much.